It's a great pleasure to introduce my colleague, Mark Dixon, the Open Group Architecture Forum Director. Mark joined, please, yes, round of applause. <laughs> Mark joined the Open Group in 2020. Um, he's barely met any of you until uh, this event. Um, he has a career spanning 30 years and has held senior enterprise architecture roles in several organizations. And Mark's going to start down the path of telling you a bit more about what's new in the TOGAF standard. So over to you, Mark. Thank you, everyone. I will grab my water. I forgot my water. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, for those who have never met me, which is all of you, um, uh, I'm the new forum director, uh, new for two years now. Um, uh, and it's my great pleasure and privilege to, to be introducing you to the TOGA Standard 10th edition. Um, I, before I tell you any more about it, I, I want to acknowledge my immediate predecessor, predecessor Sonia Gonzalez. It, it's really a, as a result of her hard work and dedication over the last few years that we've reached uh, today. I just happened to be in this role when the music stopped. It feels like a little bit. Um, and of course, uh, we're here thanks largely to the efforts of our members. And uh, I'm going to take 20 minutes now just to tell you all their names, and then I'll get off the stage. <laughs> uh, not really. OK, I've got the clicker. So TOGAF Standard 10th Edition, what's new? Well, the name, 10th Edition, is new. But the most important things to tell you about today, 20 Earth Minutes to get across to you thousands of pages of content and decades of knowledge. Uh, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to give you a flavor rather than drag you through the ingredients. And then I'm going to leave you with a big recipe book that's going to tell you how to make the best of all of the goodness that lies within. But the important things to tell you today are, as Steve mentioned a moment ago, we've introduced a more modular structure for the standard. Doesn't sound very exciting, but it is significant because we've massively extended, extended the content. And I say massively extended, it is a significant content extension that we're delivering today. We're delivering 20 new series guides into the standard, covering a whole range of topics. Um, and topics that have been uh, demanded, really requested by not just our members, but practitioners around the world. And we've also revised and restructured the fundamental content. And we've introduced two new significant words into the vocabulary of the standard, fundamental content and series guides. It's important that you understand what they represent, because it took us ages uh, to come up with those names and understand when we were talking with each other about what they represent. So um, those are the three sort of big messages that I wanted to deliver today. And I'll come on now to talk a little bit more about what they mean by pressing that button. So um, how do we come up with this concept? Well, you know, I guess we just get a whole bunch of different ideas and put them in a heap and dance around them for a couple of years and see what comes out the other end. Or possibly we take a more structured approach. It's the latter. Our work, and it's really important that we understand how um, the content that we deliver is created, um, because um, really it represents the uh, aggregation of um, not just many years elapsed work, but many decades of aggregate experience. And it's the member-driven aspect of it that really delivers the value inside the, uh, the TOGAF standard. And that experience isn't thrown away every time we come up with a new release. We build on it each time. And it's the members that really decide what we write. It's the members that write it. And it's the members that decide whether it's any good. Uh, and we should take great comfort from that. It's really important that we take a moment not just to acknowledge the contribution of the membership, but the process by which we develop that material because it means that people are able to read it with confidence, um, uh, with, with a fairly solid uh, appreciation for the fact that what they're reading is good, it's peer-reviewed, and it's based on real-world experience. 
Um, so, you know, those things are, are important aspects, important factors that give the TOGAF standard its character. So, what is the TOGAF standard? We could do, what, a couple of hours on that topic, uh, I guess, together. I'm sure you've all done a few hours on it yourselves when you've introduced it. I, I'll give you my opinion. What is it? Well, it, all of these things are things that people have told me. Uh, some of them uh, resonate with me, some of them don't, but they resonate with somebody, which is important. And I think what that tells you is that um, it, it's more than just an architecture standard. For some people, it's their um, toolkit that they go and look at to tell themselves that they're doing a good job. Sometimes it's a toolkit that they take to other people to say, this is how we do a good job. For some people, it is their job. Uh, the, the content represents really the, the main material for their business model. But at the end of the day, what it is, is the collective experience of, 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 enter, of real enterprise architects working in the industry now, our predecessors, uh, and on that we can, uh, uh, on, on that we can be, um, we can be sure. It's an incredibly popular and successful uh, product because I think it's based on real world experience and because it is founded on the content um, that, that, that is uh, put together by that process of collaboration. And it's that which makes the TOGAF standard so important uh, and so successful. And, and, and I think it is important that, uh, that I draw attention to that before I talk, you, talk with you a little bit more about uh, what's inside. So with the 10th edition, what we're introducing is an expansion uh, and uh, an extension of where we've been in the past. For those of you who are coming into the 10th edition from many years of experience uh, of the TOGAF standard, you'll recognize its core character. It's still fundamentally the TOGAF standard. You'll recognize it. We've got all the bits in it that people know and love. We have the crop circles. Uh, we have uh, our emphasis on diagrams and matrices and catalogs and the architecture development method. All of those things still intact. You'll be pleased to know. What we've um, introduced is this revision of the fundamental content, the introduction of the co concept of the fundamental content, uh, which is the, uh, the body of knowledge which you will have previously referred to as the TOGAF standard in, in its entirety. Accompanying that, we have now um, incorporated uh, the concept of TOGAF series guides into the body uh, of the standard proper. And there are now 20 of those that are added to the standard. Uh, and these uh, extend the content uh, and the scope of the TOGAF standard into a whole range of domains. We've got content on uh, agile enterprise architecture, content on the digital enterprise, business architecture, and, and much more. And I'll, I'll introduce you to a few of those topics now. So this modular structure is, um, is, is fundamental to the essence of the TOGAF 10th edition release. Uh, the, the fundamental content, which I mentioned a moment ago, is now published in uh, a range of volumes which can be, uh, each of which can be independently picked up and read. The body of knowledge itself is still a cohesive um, uh, uh, body of work. Uh, and you can download the whole thing in one giant PDF if you want to. But if you just want to take parts of it and use those in your organization, you can do that as well. And those parts will exist in a sta on a standalone basis. Uh, as well as that, the breadth of content, is, as I mentioned, uh, is significantly improved uh, and broadened. Uh, and we're covering a whole range of topics from how to really begin adopting the TOGAF standard, uh, how to establish an enterprise architecture team, uh, how to uh, approach uh, digital enterprise and digital transformation work, uh, some comprehensive content on business architecture, data and information architecture, and reference models and methods. 
And the reference models and methods really is a placeholder from which we will extend even further as we look into the future. And that's quite a big uh, difference from where we've been in the past with the TOGAF standard. The, um, the TOGAF standard up to 9.2 has been a very generalized body of work, extraordinarily valuable, but it's standing apart really from domain-specific topics. If we wanted domain-specific information, we could go reach into a whole range of white papers and guides. Now the change uh, with the TOGAF 10th edition is that that domain-specific content is subject to exactly the same level of rigor and peer review um, and extended um, consensus process that applies at a standard level. And we still have a whole reference work of white papers and guides and tools that are available in the TOGAF library, which support the standard. But the big thing to take away from this announcement today is the TOGAF standard is no longer just that chunk that we saw in 9.2. It's that plus the series guides. And you'll see as we move on downstream that that has an impact on, on uh, other aspects of the TOGAF ecosystem, which I'm not going to tell you about yet. So 20 new series guides, and this is really the beginning. This is what we're publishing today. If you go up onto to, um, the opengroup.org forward slash TOGAF today, you'll be able to pick up on that content, but this really is only the beginning. Uh, over the coming uh, months, we'll be continuing to extend the range of series guides that are available. And what this represents is a benefit of our modular structure it's going to enable us to release content much more frequently than we've been able to do in the past and extend our ecosystem of supporting products as well. So if you want to know more, how do we get started with the TOGAF 10th edition? Well, there is an excellent white paper that's been released. Uh, an introduction to the TOGAF standard 10th edition, and that goes into enormous detail uh, on not just the substance of the changes that are included with this release, uh, but also a, mo a discussion of the motivation of what led us to conclude that these changes were the right ones to make. Architects always like to understand rationale. And we're also uh, providing a number of recommendations on how to get started. There's also very detailed release notes on how the, uh, the fundamental content has been impacted by this change. And there's also a very detailed breakdown on the scope of each of the 20 series guides that are released today. Uh, and that white paper is a great place to start if you want to see the nuts and bolts of what's included in this release. I couldn't point you at a better place. But that's not the only thing that, uh, that's being released with this new version. There is a little bit more. Um, what we're seeing with this release is a re really a reappraisal of how we're presenting the standard uh, and a, the start of a journey in making that much more consumable and easier to, to, uh, to adopt. So with this great change in the number of, well, let's be honest, if we were to print it out as physical pages, it's a lot more pages than it used to be. But we're not really expecting people to consume uh, the standard uh, on paper or even in PDFs anymore. Uh, with, this, uh, with this expansion in content and with the, um, uh, exp the expansion of breadth of content, it makes much more sense to presume that our primary audience are consuming our content digitally. That doesn't really feel like a big leap of imagination. But our community perhaps are used to being able to download all our content in a big PDF that they can search maybe, or even a book printed on paper. And you will find some books um, here, here and around. But really, we're expecting that our audience now are going to be consuming our content using the TOGAF standard digitally. It, it feels kind of strange to be announcing that, but that's where we are. Um, and because of that, we're introducing the digital edition. Uh, and that really is g making it much easier for people not only to understand the scope of the content, but also just browse it, search it in a way that perhaps we ought to expect here in 2022, but isn't necessarily been how people have been used to consuming 
the TOGAF standard. It, what, am I, what do I really mean by that if I cut to the chase? I don't really think of the TOGAF standard as a book. I'm not sure that I ever did. I don't really think about the TOGAF standard as a downloadable PDF. I'm not sure I ever did. But if you did, those times are changing. And it's really important that we shift our kind of expectations accordingly. Now, if you really want to download uh, the TOGAF standard and all its other stuff as a great big PDF, you can. But I'd suggest that you're not really getting the value out of it that we're hoping um, that people will. Um, looking ahead, oh, but I just switch that off. Looking ahead. So today really is about making the making the big announcement and making the content available. I wasn't really intending to stand up in front of you today and give you chapter and verse on every change uh, that was impacting the standard. If you were expecting me to tell you that, see me afterwards and I will disabuse you of your unrealistic expectations. However, what I hope I have done today is given you a few pointers and some flavor. There's a modular structure. We've extended and revised the content and we've pushed it into more domain specific topics than TOGAF has traditionally addressed in the past. And that is really setting out um, the direction for where we're going next. And where we're headed next is more sp domain specific guidance, reasonably stable fundamental content, um, and more frequent delivery of content that is addressing um, a change in the standard. Now, that has um, downstream impact on things like certification and training, which I'm not getting into today. But hopefully, you will understand that there's a difference between making it a revision and a, uh, it, publishing a new paper that's part of the standard as opposed to putting out a white paper or a guide. That's a, a subtle but significant shift for the way that the TOGAF standard has been, is going to be managed as we go forward. So as we look ahead, more stuff, uh, more uh, frequent delivery of stuff, more emphasis on making sure that the stuff we deliver is uh, um, relevant and current, and the stuff that we have delivered in the past is maintained and refreshed. What we're also going to see is more innovative ways of accessing and adopting the standard. Steve mentioned a few minutes ago some work that's going on around uh, a digital framework for content. We're going to see that permeate its way into the TOGAF standard in, in the fullness of time. Um, and what that represents is an ongoing acknowledgement that what we want to do is make the content, make the standard itself easier to comprehend and adopt uh, uh, the, by practitioners. At the same time as I'm telling you all that, I should reassure you that 9.2 isn't being immediately deleted from the internet. If you, if you, um, we expect people to be adopting uh, the TOGAF standard 10th edition at a reasonable pace. You're going to want to weigh up what you're looking at before you decide whether or not you're going to use it. 9.2 continues to be available for the foreseeable future. There are no plans at the moment to remove that. So if your organization is heavily invested in 9.2, that's not going to disappear. What the 10th edition gives you is the opportunity to build on top of that base uh, and take on more, um, more, more practical guidance, I guess, is the way that I would describe that. So, how am I doing for time? Remo is that a countdown? Wow, I've done really well. Yay me. <laughs> I was thinking I would really struggle. Okay, so thank you is what I would like to start by saying. Um, I would like to draw your attention to uh, uh, opengroup.org forward slash TOGAF where you can download the new version of the standard. It probably was opened up, what, maybe a, a couple of hours ago, but we didn't tell anyone until now. I'd urge you to go read the white paper to find out more, especially if you're sitting in your seat or at home going, well, he hasn't really told us anything about the detail. No, no, I didn't tell you anything about the detail, but go see the white paper, go read that, because that will give you more, that will teach you a lesson 
about <laughs> expecting to see detail. That has got so much detail in it, you won't ever ask that question again. It's a good paper, go read it. Um, and with that, I think I'll give you 35 seconds of your agenda back. <laughs>